All right, so you see where we're at here. Um, in the project, we're now going to have this in the inspector here, applications or application. And then we're going to be looking at the index DB, and you may or may not have more than one database. You need one at least. And when we look inside of the particular database by sequence, I so it shows I have one item. You may have seen that if you try to click save again, so okay, uh, I'm going to try this just to show you this. Okay, I'm going to save Spider-Man number two. Um, I'm going to get an error this time. So it is running the save comic, but then something about uncaught in promise some output if you open that up pouchdb is also going to return responses in json format so here's these curly braces and then there's the data colon something comma data <coughs> comma etc so in this case i'm trying to save i type i first i type batman and it worked and then i type spider-man and then it didn't well, that's because, again, at the moment, we are hard coding the data. It's not reading what's in those boxes. It is saving, trying to save again, Batman number 12. So what this esoteric error is trying to say, document update conflict. It thinks you want to update Batman number 12. It doesn't realize, oh, you want to add Spider-Man number 2, because we're not there yet. But this is giving back the error, status error 409. And I can look up all the possible errors at pouchdb.com. This will come into play later on when we do some user interface design in, in that, well, what happens when you're updating a comic? What happens when the comic doesn't exist? What, what do we tell the user? Based on these error numbers, we will be able to create messages to, to the user. But internally, it's also giving us the message, document update conflict. And unless I read the documentation, like, what, what is that trying to say? Well, it's, it's trying to say, you seem to be trying to update an existing document. You're not doing it the right way. There's some kind of name conflict. There's only one thing in my database that be, can be called Comic 1. And I'm trying to save another thing called Comic 1. It doesn't care about any of these other fields at the moment. It cares about the underscore ID field, Comic 1. This is an error. That's expected. So if you saw that error, don't worry about it yet, because we're uh, we're not fully setting it up just yet. But you should be seeing that you get the save comic is running. You should see in your application viewer here some data. If that's there so far, so good. Well, this was all just to sort of test it out. That's why I called it test DB. Uh, we're going to set this up in a real way to start saving data for real <clears throat> and then saving the actual data that we're trying to to capture so This is where we said var create the test database. Let's comment it out, and let's add a comment. Just a quick test to create a database, a PouchDB database. We're going to do it the correct way in a moment. That was just to show you. To create a database, we create a new variable, we create a new instance of the pouch object with some name okay then we want to save data to the database it's the name of the database dot put plus the data we're going to comment out that as well this time it's a multiple line comment so we will have the multiple line comment marker so make sure you start it here make sure you end it here or the rest of your code will be commented and broken So that was just 
a test to put data to the database. Okay, because we were looking ahead to to a, a project that ultimately will be completed and I know where the project is going, uh, we need to set up something at this point that might not fully make sense, but as we work toward that result, it'll make more sense. The idea is that we're going to have a database for a person's comics, and a different person will have a different database for their comics. We could store all of the users comics in one database, but it's going to be better that we have a database for each user. So when we had here new pouch database with some name, that was a database for one user. We will be able to create databases per user, uh, depending who's logged in. So in order for that to work, we need to create a variable that will store the name of the database of the person logged in and then we will need some sort of way to uh, to activate the right database at the right time. So the way we'll set that up ourselves up first. Let's back up to where we've got all of our variables. We'll create a new variable here. A generic data pouch db database not initialized to any user var db we've always had var something equals something we create the variable and then we assign it a value this time we're, we're not a moment ago we had var db equals new pouch whatever we're not doing that yet we're not instantiating it yet we're not assigning it anything we're creating the object it's empty it doesn't have anything yet it doesn't know who it belongs to okay well that is going to be part of an that is going to be filled in correctly uh, for uh, in, inside of an initialization inside of an initialization function so we're going to say um, this is one of the cases where it does matter where you create this function We've had all of these functions so far at approximately line 80 after we've created the variables but before the event handlers. In this case, through testing from previous years, I know that there could be a problem here. Uh, we're, we're not going to create this function at the end. We've been creating all functions at the end, just adding to it. No, this time we're going to create it kind of early on. We're going to have this before the I'm going to have this set up before the first part of logged in user checker so I'll have a comment here just copy the same comment to to reword it uh, we'll say pouch db initialization function pretty function that um, depending on who's logged in
either creates or accesses their database. So up here is going, this is what's going to store the database, but we didn't say whose database. So we'll create a function to say whose database function. We'll call this uh, fn init db initialize database. That's the end of function init db. As usual, we'll have our console output that says that this function is running. some notes here. Every user has a database based on their email. So we need to check who is logged in and either create or access their database. The, the command, um, th there's going to be a command to uh, create the database if this is their very first time. You know, welcome, to the, welcome to the app, here's your database. But when a person then logs in or subsequently returns to the app, it will check who's logged in, let's load your database. That's kind of automatic after we set ourselves up here. But the purpose of this function is to initialize a database based on who is logged in. So next line after the comment, we create a variable. Call it current db. The current database based on who is logged in. We've used local storage to keep track of who is logged in. So local storage dot get item quotes what do we call our variable is logged in who is logged in right there. Where we had this logged in user checker, that's that's our hint here. This who is logged in checker, remember we've got get item check who is logged in. If it's empty, undefined, okay, there's no user logged in. If that is filled with something, there is a user logged in. So we're going to get item. Let's create a database based on the person's email address who is logged in. Or, if they're already logged in, let's load the database of who is logged in. So this is basically either or, and it's smart enough to know which of the two to be. If the database doesn't exist, let's create it with their email. If the database does exist, let's just load it into memory. That's, that's it. PouchDB is designed that way that it will, that it will do that. On the next line here, because what this is what this is storing, current DB, what it's storing is the person's email address, the unique identifier about who is logged in. We then say DB equals new pouch <coughs> DB parentheses current DB. And say, so first, check who is logged in, <coughs> store their email. Then, 
either create a new DB based on that email or load their pre-existing DB. That's pouch that figures is that yeah it's just built into pouch. This new pouch, the first time it runs, it will create the database. Subsequent to that, it knows oh the database doesn't already exist. We don't need to create it. Let's just load it. Let's just connect to it. It's automatic internally. And then we'll have finally return that info to the global scope. Remember, global scope versus local scope. Inside of this function, stuff that happens in that function stays in that function. Well, inside of this function, we're checking whose database it is. But we need to pass that information back out to the rest of the app so that that can be used in other functions. So we have return db. Return this data back to the main part of the app. Because we created the database, the generic uninitialized database on line 49 it's not set to anything we then set it to something in this function but it only exists in that function until we then return it to the rest of the the rest of the app so then we can reference the person's database throughout the rest of our app Return to the global scope, so other functions, and code can use it. So this is a function as we've worked with over and over before. We had function login, function sign up. We're, we're still working on function save comic. We've had all of these functions that run uh, after some interaction. You click the login button, it'll run the function, function login. You click the save comic button, it runs the function, save comic. This function then has to run after some interaction, but not quite direct user interaction. It has to run at the moment that the person logs in um, or you know returns them, welcomes back to, to, to being from being logged in. So this function will be called, this function will be invoked, this function will be used as part of the login checker because we've got on line 82 or so if there's nothing saved into the who is local who is logged in local storage object because there's no one logged in don't do anything or else there must be someone logged in so move us into the pg home but within this else we also want to hey we left a note here initialize database that's where we have run the function initialize database it's no longer to do it's to done initialize database based on users based on who is logged in their email This, this early if-else statement, this early logged-in user checker, is one place where we need to initialize our database. This, however, is the part of the code that kicks in um, after, basically, after the person has already logged in. 
this checks. Have they logged in? Yes or no. If they have logged in, move us to PG Home, initialize the database also. There's another path of entry to, to, to our app, which is the whole function sign up. When we sign up, at that point we should also create the database. That will be the very first time their database is created. Because remember, function, uh, function init db is used to both create a database for the first time or load an existing database. So we need to find a spot in sign up where this will also need to happen. Uh, let's see, not sign up, log in. Function log in. We might have left ourselves a note there or not. So let's go find our function um, s login. Is it like let's see up around there, 198. Uh, yep, we gave ourselves a note there too. We're pretty smart. So um, there was also an instance at approximately 198, 97 or so um, in our function to to uh, to log in. Right, function login. The, the path of, of that is that a person opens the, uh, installs the app, goes in for the first time, and they do function sign up. Then they're ready to go to function login. So with function login, this is the part where then we set who is logged in, we move them over to PG Home, so there must be here also initialize the database. If they then quit the app, and then they're still logged in, and they come back, that's when that if-else part starts. They see someone's logged in, initialize the database to that person. So wherever you have your to-do to do message there, that's been done also. Initialize database based on who just Who just logged in uh, but actually looking at my notes this is out of order this should happen after set item initialize the database after set item because sequentially here we're saying run function init DB but init DB does a get item but we haven't set the item yet so this is an example where the order definitely matters so our note here is a little bit off we need it to be after set item so be careful there. Move that below after set item. I put the note a little too high for some reason. It's got to be after set. Because it makes sense, doesn't it? We're saying, OK, we're going through the process. The person created an account. The person is signing in. Set item, local storage. Set it into the memory who has logged in. Next line, OK, let's create a database based on who is logged in. If we had that first, we never set the item. That'll be undefined. So we initialize the database after we set the item of who is logged in. And then after that, it takes us to PG Home. Signed in or logged in? Uh, same, same concept, different word. It's function login. So this should all be happening in function login. Set item who is logged in. So we've got our database initialization. I believe here we can test this a little bit. Uh, yes, um, should be able to test this. I'm going to view my error list just in case before I go to uh, the browser. That seems normal. Load my browser, F12, uh, open the developer's console right away. I see people trying to work on the app for a moment before F12. I would say open F12 right away. No meaningful errors here. Function initDB is running. Good. It's running because last time I left the app, I was logged in as V. Dot 
to fully test it under application, now I've got a brand new pouch database based on the person's email. I'm going to try to log out. I'm going to sign up with a brand new account, x at x.com. Join. Log in with that brand new account, x at x.com, password. Uh, console here, function init db is running. I just created a new account, it runs the initialize function. If I go back to application, got a new database for a new user. So depending on the person who's logged in, the database initializes to who is logged in. If I close the project completely, run it again, it should remember I logged in last as x at x.com, and that's the database in question. x at x.com. So let me go back here. Let, let me pause there for a moment, confirm that that's working. The main thing is that you've got your initializing initialization function. Let me put that up there. And then you use the initialization function in the if-else statement and in the function to, to, to log in. Did that work for everyone? Anyone need a little help on that?
matter what uh, time uh, definitely flies when you're having fun. It's already 9.23. So just a moment. If it's 9.23, it's time to wrap up very soon. Let me save my code so far to the network folder. If it's working up to this point, at the very least, we've got it keeping track of who is logged in. So we're on our way.